So now at the end of completing my six years at a private school, I can come out and say that you don't need to go to a private school to get into medicine. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video from HSTV and today we're looking at a bit of a debate. I'm trying to come up with a clear cut answer to, as you can see in the title, is it easier for private school kids to get into medical school, specifically at Edinburgh University? And I guess um, someone actually commented this and it kind of hit me to heart because I am actually from a private school. So um, I went to a state school for my primary education and then I went to a private school for my high school education. And now um, if you're new to the channel and you don't know, I am a medical student at the University of Edinburgh. So it kind of like, dawned on me I guess that um, a lot of people used to say this as well back when I was in high school that it's easier to get into medical school because you're from a private school um, and so on so I'm going to be kind of addressing that debate today and letting you guys know um, how my experience at a private school was, did I get more help, was it easier for me to get work experience etc and um, We'll be looking at some statistics and some studies as well um, to hopefully prove uh, all those people wrong that think that it's easier for private school kids to get into medical school. So I guess the first thing to establish is what is a private school? And I think it's quite easy to get mixed up between grammar schools, private schools and state schools. So I'm just gonna quickly clarify these and what they mean in the UK. Um, I'm not sure how it works all around the world, but I'm just gonna give you some definitions to start with so we're absolutely clear on um, what we're talking about. So a state school in the UK essentially um, is available for everyone, it's free and it's funded by the taxpayers money so it's run by the state the government and um, you have all subjects there all teachers are available um, you have clubs societies everything that you can join there um, but it's all free and because this is the UK by law every household has a high school near them and mostly that's a state school and it's compulsory that you go to high school so uh, that is what a state school is then moving on to a grammar school so a grammar school and a private school actually requires an entry test so they will test you on your maths english um, verbal and non-verbal reasoning generally you might have heard of the 11 plus test that's quite common in grammar schools here in the UK and a grammar school uh, you have to pay for it so it's not free um, but the thing is that you can have some private grammar schools and some state funded grammar schools but the main thing about a grammar school versus a state school is that you need to do an entrance test and then based on how you've done in that test you will be able to study at a grammar school then moving on to a private school, which is uh, the one that I went to, this has basically also got an entrance test um, and this is fully funded by the people that are studying there, so you have to pay the fees. So there is no such thing as a state funded private school as there is with the state funded grammar school. So I guess that is the differences between a state school, a grammar school and a private school. And uh, let me tell you one thing, probably in the UK more likely that I don't know how it works around the world but there is a lot of opportunities available at all three types of schools so let me tell you that this is about to get heated so I guess the next thing is to look at Edinburgh University in particular um, I had a lot of people say to me that Edinburgh University always looks for academics and private school kids normally achieve really high grades so and they're really academic and they they have really good marks and whatever so they're easier it's easier for them to get into Edinburgh Medical School but I just want to put out there that it doesn't matter how much help is available to you, it doesn't matter how many opportunities are available to you, if you yourself are determined and you yourself work hard to achieve the grades, it doesn't matter what school you go to. I've, I've got so many friends who are from state schools who've gone into medicine. I've got people in state schools who achieve better marks than me. I've got people in private schools who fail their exams. So to say that just because of the type of school you go to, you're gonna get better marks is quite a wrong assumption to make in my opinion. Now, I'm only gonna be talking about medicine admissions, but that's basically because I am a medical student. So I'm not really gonna go into how it works for other courses, but the thing with medicine, 
uh, admissions, as I'm sure you know, they're very complicated. It's not just about the grades, it's actually about work experience, voluntary work, it's about showing your interest in medicine, going to conferences, going to different talks, and really getting a feel for what a career in medicine is like. And um, if that wasn't enough, you've also got UCAT interviews and personal statements to do as well. So, is it a thing that it's more you get more help at a private school compared to a state school on all of these components of the medicine application. Well, actually, it's kind of a yes and no, because the thing is, I'm not at a state school, so I can't really speak for them. I can't say the support that they're giving or not giving, but I can tell you that some of the conferences that I attended, um, there were some uh, talks at the Royal College of Physicians, Royal College of Surgeons here in Edinburgh about a career in medicine, and I attended them um, when I was in high school. And can I just say, it wasn't only private school kids that were there, there was lots of state school kids also there listening to the lecture and taking notes and showing their interest in medicine. So I guess from that point of view, um, state schools did also support their children and they did also um, give um, those children that opportunity and they let them know that there's this talk happening, be useful for you to go. So that wasn't only the private schools telling private school kids um, to go to this talk. So the point I'm trying to get across here is that you have opportunities. Um, sometimes I think the main thing is that people think that in state schools there's a lot of it's like a disruptive environment or that not everyone there is there to study. There's this kind of assumption that sometimes at a state school people are just there because it's compulsory for them to go to school, as in they will be very disruptive in class, they won't be, you know, they don't have that motivation to work. But actually, at Edinburgh University, there are more state school kids studying there compared to private or grammar school kids put together. So, I mean, I guess that's probably not the strongest of arguments because there's more state schools in general rather than um, the grammar schools and private school kids uh, put together. But the point I'm trying to get across is that there are opportunities and state schools will also help their students out. So I guess on the topic of opportunities and finding out about conferences and talks and um, having these opportunities to join different clubs and whatever, well, we had loads of state school um, like sports teams come to our campus to play our school teams and they won. So they were very good, they're very capable and they had that opportunity to come. The next thing I want to talk about is career advisors. So we had a few career advisors in uh, our private school and, you know, they were helpful enough. But at the end of the day, the research that I did, my career advisor couldn't tell me that stuff. The preparation that I did for UCAT or the preparation I did for interviews, my career advisor or no matter the amount of support that my private school gave me, end of the day, it was all up to me to make sure I was ready and I had to put that capability in myself. So yes, it's nice to see that encouragement around you if you've got like a nice group of people all wanting to do, all wanting to do medicine. It's nice to have this career advisor support or having mock interviews or whatever. But end of the day, it's all down to what you do rather than what you are given. So I guess that argument is still in place. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a difficult argument, I understand that, um, but I just want to talk about as well now why would you want to go to a private school um, rather than a state school? So I guess I'll talk about myself. Why did my parents decide to put me in a private school rather than a state school? Well, first of all, I was at a state-funded primary school, so you can get private primary schools as well, but I was at a state-funded primary school and the environment was quite disruptive, I wanted to do medicine, so my parents thought that I would get more opportunities and more support at a private school. So now at the end of completing my six years at a private school, I can come out and say that you don't need to go to a private school to get into medicine. Um, there's a big misconception that if you pay money for something or if you put in that pain of putting in money There's going to be a larger gain in terms of academic results or um, Sporting achievements or in terms of getting into good universities But that's really not true and in fact, there's actually an argument 
that universities don't like to take private school kids because they think that they've been too privileged or that they've been getting too much support and they're not independent enough. But really, like I had to do a lot of running about. I had to do my own research. So please don't put it down to the private school that's like giving us support or anything. Like, yeah, there's a bit of encouragement here and there, but I'm sure you get that in a state school as well. So yeah, by all means, if you wanna go to a private school, go. I had a really great experience. In fact, my private school was called George Harriet School. I will actually link them in the description and I'll show you their logo somewhere as well. Uh, but they were generally, it was um, a really lovely environment, lots of opportunities, lots of um, great support available. But I don't think that that was the confounding variable, if that makes sense. That wasn't the reason why I got into medical school at Edinburgh University. So I do like to speak with a bit of evidence or with um, some statistics behind what I'm saying. So um, according to a, a paper that I read, what they're saying is that only 22% of private school kids get accepted into studying medicine. So what that means is that out of all the private school kids who apply to study medicine, only 22% of those kids actually get accepted into a medical school. Now, I mean, yeah, you might want to go and read this paper yourself and you might find that it might be a bit biased. But the point I'm trying to get across is really that it's not about what school you go to. And actually, there might even be more opportunities for state school kids to get into university. For example, the widening participation programs, they are specifically for low income households who can't afford to go to a private school or a grammar school who, or who can't afford to take on these opportunities that have a high cost to them. So there is a lot of opportunities out there for state school kids. So please get this thought out of your head. And if anything, private school kids are almost at a disadvantage when applying to medical school. But even then, when I, when I say that, we're, it's it's a really level playing field, to be honest. It's all down to the applicant themselves. Um, if you don't study, you're not gonna get the grades. And the thing is that I've heard a lot of things that um, there's not a lot of support in state schools as well. That's not always true. Because let me tell you, there's some private school teachers who are extremely unhelpful. And I personally had very good teachers. So George Harriet's, please do look them out. I really, really do recommend them. They have a brilliant environment, brilliant teaching staff. And I was really happy to go to a private school. But again, I'm saying the same thing again, but it's not because of George Harriet's school that I got into medicine. Yes, they were a factor. Yes, they gave me the support. Um, but end of the day, the studying that I did in my room is what got me here. <laughs> so yeah, there's teachers in private schools, there's teachers in state schools, there's teachers in grammar schools, and all teachers have one goal, to help students and help them achieve their dreams and their goals. So um, I do hope that this um, video has been a bit, bit of an eye opener, I guess, into private schools, state schools, and grammar schools, and if that actually makes a difference to your application when you're applying for medicine at Edinburgh University. Um, most of my friends are from state schools. Um, my private school friends, they did very well. They went to various other places. We all got offers from medical schools, but that was because we ourselves were a good applicant. We had good grades, we had the work experience, we had the voluntary, we had good UCAT scores, and we did well at interviews. So private schools, yes, they may shape a very important part of your life and they make really great personalities, they produce great results, but is it always needed to reach your dreams or achieve your goals? Definitely not. Um, so please, don't worry. What school, whatever school you're at, um, if you work hard, you can achieve your goals um, regardless of the support you get and regardless of where you're studying. Um, I'm, again, I'm not sure how it works in other countries, but if you are from a state school, which probably you are because state schools are more common, majority of doctors are uh, had studied at state schools. So please don't be disheartened by any of this. And if anything, private school kids are a bit of a disadvantage. Um, so yeah, that is gonna be the end of today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this different kind of debatey style video. Um, 
I was gonna do a bit of a podcast style thing, um, but then I, I kind of left that because I thought it was a bit complicated. But if you guys are interested in like learning more about these kind of debates or um, seeing me chat about these kind of topics, then please do let me know and maybe we can sort out like a podcast idea for the future. Let me know in the comments how you found it and what your thoughts are on this debate. Um, and yeah, I will see you all uh, in my next video, which is probably gonna be next week. Um, so until then, stay safe, stay healthy and uh, take care of yourselves and don't worry about private schools and state schools. <laughs>